Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mimosa Hotline, where Ronnie Bartles, your business strategist, myself, Ashley Rota, your brand strategist, go live every Thursday in what we call Mimosa Hotline, where we talk about raw, real, unfil unfiltered, real life business, marketing, branding, and anything that kind of comes up in our week. Um, I'm getting too good at that. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so join us in the comments. Uh, if you're live with us, hello, hello. If you're watching the replay, hello, hello. We've got multiple opportunities for you to connect with us. We have the chat um, that is the comment section, I guess, that's live for you at any time. Like even if it's two weeks since that episode and you want to leave a comment for us, please do. We love engaging with you, hearing yep. from you. Um, we also have the hotline that you can actually call in, leave voicemails, play with it, have fun with it, ask questions that you wouldn't want to admit out loud or whatever your excuses for calling the hotline, just call the damn thing. I like try it. It'd be fun. Uh, we also are offering our two for one BOGO experts of two of us showing up, Ronnie and myself for an hour for BYOB, aka bring your business and get our expert strategy insights and recommendations for you. Um, 250 bucks, like you don't tell it. it. It, you totally can. Like, I just, yeah, it's not a thing. And then you were like, oh, oh, wow, that was reasonable. Okay, cool. Yeah, we are not trying to break banks over here. We're trying to support you. So we have that. Um, Let's see. Anything else? I mean, that pretty much covers it, I think. Swag. At least Swag. Ah, we both have it. Cause yeah. Yay, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'm going to do my little tech thing. And, um, See if I don't mess it up. Um, I mean, we'll see. Tech is it's never our friend, really. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to be like, we'll see, because like you had no faith. I was like, excuse me. No, no, no. It's not I about. It. I, it's not about you. I, <laughs> it's about. Yeah. I did it. We're good. Um, so comment section is up and available for you. If you join us, um, great live or on the replay again. So shout out to our little follower besties. I miss everyone. Where is everybody? We've had Violetta. We've had Angie. We've had Michelle. We've had Jen. Who else do we usually have hanging out with us? Kathleen. Ooh, um, Kathleen. Yep. And, um, Edie. Oh my gosh, that took me a second. You know when you can see their face, but you can't yes. see, think of their name. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's I mean, that, that yeah. happens. To, I'm terrible with names, so that actually happens to me quite often. Yeah, me too. I want to be good at it, though. I want to be that person, but I'm not. I have come to the resolution that I'm not, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna accept it for what it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. try. Mm -hmm. So. Well, top anyway. topics for us to discuss today. Uh, first one is just so vital and so important. Have we all seen the new TV series called Murphy? I am so excited about this. Um, Ronnie and I have been talking about it on the back end. Obviously, I binged it because it's required as a water person, as a water baby growing up being a competitive swimmer. Like the second I saw it, I was like, nothing else matters. <laughs> I binged all four episodes like in one sitting right there. Ronnie has a life and she's only 20 minutes in. So I have feels, but I won't I'm share. Sure. Like I've heard <laughs> shit this week. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's why when you tell everybody what's going on, it'll make more sense. But right now I yes. get to just be evil. So <laughs> um though the show is about a series of creatives that get into tales, aka mer tales, and um, are professional mermaids. And there's men and women, and they're just, it's this really amazing show about A, the artistry, B, the history, the industry, the influencing side of it, and then also just like their personal lives and how they've come to being a mermaid professionally, yeah. which I freaking love. And I have to say, when I was little, um, I was this huge swimmer and my dad used to take quarters and he would throw them into the various pools. So I competed all over the country. So we were always at a hotel with a pool, figuring it out, whatever. And he would throw in quarters and I'd have to fetch them and get them. And they were like my treasure I got to keep. And of course I played underwater mermaid, duh. Um, but it was like a thing. 
I don't know how anyone didn't, but whatever. I definitely will have opinions if you never got in a pool and thought you were a mermaid, but that's okay. Um, and my favorite part of that, this whole series is they talk about their personas, which is like a mermaid persona and how they figure out what their act is, what their look is. And it reminds me a little bit of like drag queens when they I was gonna say realize that. they're right. They're mm -hmm. kind of aesthetic and style and whatever, but this mm -hmm. is like a sea creature. And in um, one episode, you know, they have all of them showcased and it's really fascinating to see the ones that stand for cause and the ones that stand for more artistry you know like they're just mm. beautiful mermaids someone that's like stands for all of the uh waste that's in the waterways and things like that and so it made me think again about branding and do you have a platform or do you have like a pretty picture <laughs> like like what right. is your image and what's your brand and i mean i eat breathe and sleep this shit it's just kind of i don't know i seem to find it everywhere yeah <laughs> and then more people branding matters <laughs> and so yeah um yeah I thought the same thing as soon as it, I mean even though I'm only 20 minutes into it like that was my my first reaction was like I've known some people in the drag industry and I'm like this is very similar to kind of that industry as far as like yeah. it's an entertainment industry you know it's a it's a creative artistic entertainment industry and it was just very yeah. similar that was my first thought but it, I just think it's funny that like you started watching it you voxered me about it and I was like oh yeah, I remember like when I was a kid we went to this place I think it was called witchy watching <laughs> and you were like that's it and I had started it and of course that's the opening scene and I'm like I remember that I've been there <laughs> I'm like so jealous you got to experience it like I didn't and now you know I had such a great childhood, but where were my, like, what, like, how'd you miss that? Like we traveled all over the world. Like I had the best childhood, you know, we went to, we had like an annual Disneyland pass, like all the things. How did you, how did we miss this? Like, this is something that would have been like, so obvious for me. It's interesting that we missed it only other than it being in Florida, but we, I mean, I we took say, cruises out of West Florida. Coast. How did we uh, yeah, I, was I know say, well, we like left on cruises from Florida, like yeah. multiple times. So I'm just like, what did we miss? I well, like living on the east and the west coast that way. Like, it's yes, you did probably a lot on the east coast, but it's not like living here where you think about like the things that are here. You know, right? Like, like maybe we would know like Knott's Berry Farm, right? That's more I have no clue about it. You know, like I have no Seriously? idea about that. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, no. okay cool. So like, it's okay, that kind of, yeah, viewer, it's, kind I of, see it's that kind of thing. Like, and so when we went, I mean, I was probably maybe 10 or 12 and for some reason, you know, we didn't go to Florida a ton, but we, we had done, you know, the traditional Disney world tour, you go to, uh, you know, to Orlando and you stay in the park and you do Disney world for five days or whatever it is. And we had done that as kids. But for some reason, my parents on this one were like, let's just drive around and go to all of these amusement parks in Florida that are not Disney. <laughs> it was yeah. a whole week. Yeah. And I mean, we hit a different one every day. So like nice. one day, so like one day was the day that we went to see the mermaids. And then, you know, then I think the next day we might've been at SeaWorld or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Like it was, it was very specific, not Disney stuff. And that kind of makes sense because like we were West Coast and we went to Disneyland, but never went to Disney World necessarily. Yeah, so we, we always, I've but never like, been to Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Disney World a few times, but I've never been to Disneyland. <laughs> a moment of silence for that. Okay. Um, and same, I mean, I get it, but like, um, sorry, I straight legit just got that distracted. Sorry. You know, the guys that are in the... Um, uh, the scaffolding on that building next to me yes. they're up at the top like rearranging the anchor points and I just wasn't expecting humans up there so I just got a little <laughs> distracted sorry anyways hello viewer we see you hello hello say hi in the comments if you want to join our mer conversation um and oh my god they like have an entire language like I so need to be a part of this because you know me with all my code words and everything but they're like hello and it means hello and then they've got like you'd be my shellster <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, they, I saw oh my the, God, the I was, mermaid Easter, sisters. No, Seaster, sorry, Seaster, not Seaster. Yeah, Seaster. that's what I was like. Seaster. This is it, this is it, like, this is, this these is are my people. I need. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. Cause I don't know that I have the desire to do drag, but I have the desire to be a mermaid for f- yes. Yes. I will swim. I will splash my little tail and I would be damn good at it. That's all I got to say. Um, well, but I it mean, also made me think of the cross training, you know? I was just getting ready to say like that the first even 20 minutes of the first episode, like there's a lot of strength training in that. Like this is like, this is athletic. Like, oh yeah, you, have to, you know, not you, you, not only do you have to like work on your strength to do like moves and stuff, but you have to work on your breath because they have to be underwater much longer than a normal person would be underwater for something. Yeah. You know? Like, I think the cross training would be, um, oh no. Oh shoot. I'm having that day where I can see everything. I just can't think of the words. Um, synchronized swimming, mm-hmm. uh, synchronized swimming and breath control, because yeah. one, you also gymnastics, you have to be hyper flexible. You yeah. have to have that, um, synchronized swimming ability of just how they can hold their bodies out of the water, also in the water and just the mobility of that. And yeah, athleticism, a hundred percent. I don't think they even gave them any credit as far as that. I mean, they kind of do. They they talk more about hypothermia because the uh, um, actual aquariums are yes. cold because of the fishies. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, when you find those like hobbies, specialties, whatever it is, and you just become like instantly addicted and you must know everything. That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> well, I mean, it, like, if you think about it, so like they put on shows, there are multiple of uh, mermaids in a show, but they yeah. get underwater and they have to coordinate and they are blind and deaf underwater. <laughs> and has uh, still have not to, exactly, but yes, I mean, but, but, you know, I mean, not completely, but, but obviously like those senses are hindered because you're underwater. <laughs> I know. I think every swimmer just internally giggled slightly at you, but yes. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. And no, I mean, like you can hear coaches, you can hear underwater slightly gargled. Um, but yes, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I had like that moment of the three blind mice under there, like doing this routine. (laughs) Okay. I guess so. Um, yeah, but I was thinking too, the real bitch of it is salt water, opening your eyes under salt water. And I was like, how are they doing this? Now we used to have things. So one, I'd be curious if contacts help. I don't know if that's a thing, but number yeah. two would be, um, we used to, and I saw them doing acidity tests for their eyes. Yes. You know, you have, we used to do milk in our goggles and you like fill your goggles, put your goggles on and then like do an eye wash in your goggles. And like, no one would know that unless you were a legit swimmer. Like who the freak does that? But I'd be curious. Anyone that ever watches this show, if you put in the comments that you ever did the milk eye wash in your goggles, I want to know you because <laughs> it's a thing. Um, and like, yeah, the ear infections and the sinus infections that they get from pressurizing and going under, because this is also not mass you know, and like not, uh, scuba gear where you can pressurize and go slow. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. and some of them do it in open fresh water. Like, I don't, I'm hooked clearly. I I mean, if I remember seeing the show, I'm granted it's been 30 years ago. Um, (laughs) I mean, to be honest, it's probably been 30 (laughs) years ago. Um, I feel like they stayed underwater, like most of the time. And they, when they needed oxygen, they would grab, you know, an oxygen, like scuba thing to take a breath and hold their, you know, to keep them doing the show. I don't remember them going to the surface often for that and coming back down. No, the show talks about that. They have hoses, but they also um, have water. I don't forget. I forget what the name was, but air lockers. So they turn, um, like those metal storage containers upside down and create an air pocket so they can swim into that too. Mm -hmm. But the crazy thing they were talking about at wishy-washy is how there used to be, I don't think I'm over exaggerating, like a 20 meter tube they had to swim down and out through. Like you panic in that? Mermaid plug. Like, what do you, what do you do there? Like, how do you, (laughs) how do you get the mermaid out? And it's like, I don't know. That seemed like a highly, um, oh, risk or high risk job. <laughs> I mean, it is. But, 
I hope that this creates like a surge for like Cirque du Soleil. I know they have their O show, the water show, Mm -hmm. but like maybe there could be a variation or addition or something or any of the parts. Like we just need this. I need, I need this. I don't care about what other people. (laughs) Ah, I'm happy. (laughs) Doesn't take much for me. Let me tell you. But yeah. And don't you fret. I even started thinking about what the Chicago mermaid of this lake would look like because you know I don't know if it's Michigan Lake or Lake Michigan yet I'm still working on that but whatever that thing is um I would hop in there with a tail for sure (laughs) and I know you told me I wasn't allowed to go boat hitchhiking but come on if I put on a tail do you know how many boats I could get on Mm. (laughs) hitchhiking (laughs) it's not safe I'm sorry (laughs) fine Oh my God. And there's like the perfect spot too, right here by the Harbor. I, oh, I was like, hi. <laughs> like, pick me Hitchhiking up. on any sort of vehicle, land or water does not seem mm-hmm. safe. This like is how is all the true crime podcasts start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to find a different friend and I'll do it there's totally a way like and they maybe, were all you know maybe maybe stephanie stuff. will be up for that but not me oh yeah i'm doing it i'm gonna hop on a sailboat one of these days just swim out and be like can i can i hang out with you <laughs> just like, oh yeah put like a little um flask in my suit and just swim out and be like i came prepared <laughs> it'd be so good I don't know what your sense of adventure is. I mean, yeah, on land, don't do it. In the water, every day. That doesn't seem different to me for some reason. (laughs) Totally different. (laughs) Totally different. They're nicer. Like, and don't go for like the sketch ass, like fisher boats. Cause that's just going to get you hooked. I mean, I guess if they can afford a boat. The sailboat, the like party boat, the like, as long as you can pull yourself out, like meaning onto the boat and also behind the boat freaking swim up be like hey I mean I guess if they can afford to have a boat and they're at least got some money (laughs) it's not even about money it's about gas who has gas that's all you need in the water gas (laughs) (laughs) clearly you have not done this if you're out looking for money (laughs) money is not in the water (laughs) Maybe on the boats or on the, um, well, that too, like yachts, you call them boats. Like I always thought that was so interesting. Like the mental complex of boats, like there's a certain level that they're, you know, oh, it's a ship and then it's a boat (laughs) and then it's like a yacht, like how they, like the bigger it is, it's just a boat versus when you think it would be called a ship. (laughs) They don't call it that. It's like opposite lingo. It's like the smaller, the little tugboat that's a boat <laughs> then you get, or no, that's a ship, but then you get up to the things and that's a boat. And you're like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Obviously I've been landlocked for too long. If I'm getting this excited, I mean, I'm like at the door clawing my way out. <laughs> Let me out. Yeah. Um, anyway. yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell everybody what you've been up to? I mean, I get, yeah, sure. It's, it's if been, you don't want to. No, I'm fine. totally fine. I'm totally fine talking about it. Um, but it's been a, like, it's been a May. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's been a May, yeah. It's Ugh. been a May. Um, yeah, so first MRI happened. Mm-hmm. I went to the doctor. Like, it's not anything serious. It's just a tendon strain up in here and, PT and time is all it'll take. So, I mean, if that's the outcome, like that's the best outcome, I guess I could get. Definitely. But But there's going to be some fun in that too. That PT is not fun. Yeah. So I I still have to go make my first PT appointment yet, but I hadn't done that because I've been sick for a week Yeah, (laughs) and thought I was sick, sick and ended up I, I was when I went to go get the results of this so I went to you know one of those medical buildings that has multiple like medical offices yeah. in it so like it's on the third floor I go see the orthopedic doctor for the shoulder and I'm like you know what 
I'm here. There's a walk-in clinic downstairs. I'm just going <laughs> to took the elevator down, walked across the hall and went into the walk-in clinic and was like, I have abdominal pain. Like, like my appendix ruptured again that I don't have. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't have it. This is what it feels like. Um, and so anyway, I've had that since last week and I'm not hundred percent sure if it was connected to when I was sick earlier in the month, but I don't think so. I think they're two separate instances. I think I actually had a stomach bug then, and this is a whole separate thing. So they sent me for an ultrasound yesterday with the instructions that if it got any worse and needed to go to the emergency room right away. And so I go and do my ultrasound yesterday and, um, the tech who's not actually supposed to tell you what it is. Cause she's not a doctor. I mean, she wasn't a minute into it and she was like, oh yeah, I think I know what this is. And uh, she's, and then says, I can't tell you. And I was like, I mean, and I get why she can't like, it's a liability. She's not a doctor, the whole thing. But anyway, you know, she's like doing the whole thing. She's like, well, they ordered this. So, you know, I'll keep, I'll do the whole like stuff. I mean, it was, yeah, there was a lot. And (laughs) so she, she's asked, you know, we're like just talking. She asked me, she's like, do you strain a lot? And I knew as soon as she asked me that question, what it was. And I was like, well, you know, I have a new dog. She's a puller, you know, I work out like five, six days a week. Like I'm very active. All the packaging and shipping. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm covering it by way of Charleston. So I'm doing all of the packaging and shipping there. And like, I'm very active in the last month. Um, and so she's like, "Mm -hmm." and you know, it's like, "Mm -hmm." and then just like kept going. (laughs) And then a few minutes later, she was like, do you want me to tell you what I think it is? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, I think it's a hernia. And I was like, when you asked me about straining, I knew it. I knew that's what you were thinking. And she's like, yeah, that's kind of what I think it is. And I was like, okay. She was like, but I got to send it over back to the doctor. You saw it. Urgent care. They have to look at it. They'll give you like the official, like what to diagnosis slash what to do next. So Mm -hmm. I'm bolster of some sorts of not so fun things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the one thing I even I told Alan today is with a hernia, that's an injury, not a disease. Yeah. Which seems to be a small pattern of injuries. Correct. <laughs> I mean, I was sick one time, so that was an yeah, right, but an injury is still sick. It's still a no, disease, like a thing, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah please stop hurting yourself. That'd be nice. So I actually will say I feel, I still have pain, but I feel a lot better today than I did. And I don't know if that's just because now I kind of know what it is. And so now psychologically I'm feeling better about it. So my whole body's feeling better about it, you know, but I mean, I still have pain. It's just not what it was. That's good. And Hey, any mental relief, even if it is relief, that's better. Right. And Angie's with us. She says that sucks, Ronnie, be kind to yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Listen to what Angie Angie says, because she won't listen to me. (laughs) We were talking about multitasking, and I think a lot of people can appreciate this. Like, (laughs) I should probably share mine because that was so ridiculous and funny at the same time, but it's not appropriate. But, um, right? Like, I'm just like, okay, I need to check myself. Um, But many of us, ourselves included, and pretty much everyone we know, because like attracts like we are ridiculously talented multitaskers. Like it's not like where the average person would consider, you know, two or three tasks multitasking. We're at like 10 and not even counting how many tabs are open, but like we're multitasking. And so I was telling Ronnie, I was like, wonder if you could do like a personal challenge. She's laughing at us. Um, I wonder if we could do like a personal challenge where it's like one task at a time seriously, like one task at a time. And maybe for you, one business at a time, because you'll be doing like tasks for three different companies at the same time. And I'm like, okay, this may be self-inflicted slightly. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I, I, I have always said this, like, I'm not a believer actually in multitasking because our brains can't do it, but you do we, it. We flip. 
like we we move from one to another very quickly right it's not we also want to call her out on that <laughs> technically multitasking but i will say throughout the day as like far as work is concerned i mm. flip between clients this is denial she a won't hundred times a day it's I just know. flipping denial <laughs> i mean i am back and forth on clients all day if i know you, you are i know yeah well i'm like, like wearing the multiple hats and things but like I will say work-wise though, I do try not to actually multitask a lot because I track my time per client and you can't do right. that in a time tracker. Okay. So that's fair. Um, so. Angie would like to, uh, she says, I think a wager is in order. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but see, I, I hear you on that. So you, you're allowed to have your flip-flopping. Um, I just would love to watch you time track. Yeah, she's like total denial. Um, <laughs> I would love to watch you time track because it's probably like start, da, 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 stop, start, da, 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 stop, start, stop. It's like um the chess clock, like top, 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 yes. top. <laughs> I mean, it is not unusual for me throughout the day to have like in my time tracker, I might have like 15 entries, but all of them are less than five minutes. <laughs> because I've like flipped from one client to another like 15 times and each one of those tasks was less than five minutes like literally it's a list like that I love you so much <laughs> I mean yeah that's my day <laughs> I love it okay <gasps> Yeah. Okay. Tomato, tomato, ladies and gentlemen. I, <laughs> um, I, have, I, I have been trying to be much better about like when I turn on my, my time tracker for a client, like <laughs> working on all of my tasks for that client in the same like batch of time so oh, that I'm not back and forth so much, mm -hmm. but that doesn't always happen. No. No, Angie, but we need time it. Tracker will, over here. <laughs> well, and my because so like my my time tracker is also supposed to be so that when you work for clients based on time, then you bill them based on that time. And so the time tracker is built that way. So it won't let you double time on clients because you can't technically bill that way. Yeah. So I can't double time on tasks on my time tracker. Yeah. It makes sense. It's just still. <laughs> now, I can't say that my brain isn't thinking of 400 other things at the same time, you know? Well, I'm not. The, the reason that we get to laugh at you is all of us are doing this. All of us are like, oh, no, I don't multitask. I'm very focused. I'm very uh, accomplished. Oh, no, I'm that, very that, productive. I did not say I was focused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's clarify. Get a little truth out of you today. Okay, go. Cool. I did not say yeah, I was focused. But yeah and then just so you don't feel like the only sacrificial lamb i was laughing how many of us have done this like i i will keep it pg but it's hilarious like okay so i'm doing so so i'm wrapping up a client meeting yesterday that went so well it was a dude by the way which i was like shocked i was like oh what maybe it's not horrible working with men after all okay it's fine not. it was fabulous anyway so i'm finishing up our session I'm <laughs> talking about multitasking. This is just too funny. So I want to share that I was just flipping between tasks <laughs> and uh, I'm doing summary meeting notes, uploading the recording from the session, building the Google Drive and organizing the like uh, brand layout for the next meeting. While So I'm waiting for the upload to happen. So I go in and make a cup of tea. So I put on the water and then I go and use the restroom and I'm like, oh, be really fast. <laughs> And I'm like, started giggling because I was like, what are we rushing for? Like, we have no more meetings this afternoon. There is no time trial on this. Like, no one has the time clock. Like, what am I actually doing? And just kind of sat there and I was like, Tee. Have you ever laughed by yourself, by the way? It's the it's just ridiculous because then when you get the giggles and you're by yourself you're more embarrassed with the fact that you're like laughing by yourself alone and it's more funny. And then you're just gonna have to catch yourself. And like, I don't know. I thought that like two cats would give me some type of like roommate vibe or experience of such, but I think I've been left alone for too long. <laughs> I 
including my client meeting, because I'm just like, oh, I, I either need to get out or I need a sanity check or just something. Cause like, I'm, ugh. and then I'm just like, okay, I'm going to calmly relieve myself. Thank you so much. You know, I put on hand lotion before I leave the bathroom, <laughs> obviously wash my hands, do all the things like try and slow myself down, then go finish making my tea. <laughs> go back. If anyone has sanitary questions, I don't want to hear this. I was clean. I washed my paws. I'm just saying this is my way back that like you, we all catch ourselves in these times where we're like just kerfluffled. And then we mm -hmm. got to slow down and be like, okay, like really like, yeah. <laughs> what's really going How on? How am here? I really living this life? Am I rat racing the crap out of it? Or am I like just doing what I need to right. do, having a good life? <laughs> like, and I think when you start straining elbows, knees, and toes, um, it might be time to just take a moment for self-reflection. <laughs> I mean, yes. I swear to God, if you pop out a toe, I'm going to be like, okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, it's, and it's just, it, for me, I'm like the most least drama person in the world. Like I don't have a lot of drama in my life. Um, and I like it that way. And so like, this feels like a lot of drama around centered around me. And I'm like, right, this is driving me crazy. It has to work itself out. I enjoy other people's drama on reality TV a lot. I just don't want it for myself. And I feel like I'm there. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah you I'm got feeling, a couple of things just piling up enough that it's kind of. Um, I'm feeling a little high maintenance right now. And I don't like it. <laughs> the wrong type of high maintenance. Like, the wrong like type of high maintenance. Like, exactly. Right, right. I want a different type of high maintenance. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I get that. So yeah, we're falling apart, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, Ronnie is. I'm, I'm falling I'm, apart. And let me tell you. This has started since my birthday. If this is what 46 is like, I'm like, I'm out. I'm giving or just, it back. Or return it. Like, just send yeah. it back. <laughs> I'm sending it back. I'm going back to 45. <laughs> Start again know. next year. Yeah. Um, Angie's just laughing at us, which I appreciate. We get a bunch <laughs> of the little emojis like flying yes. out just laughing at us. Thank you. We appreciate you. <sighs> you know, that's the thing. You've got to be able to have laughs, humor, laugh at yourself. You've got to just be able to enjoy life, which is, you know, how we like it. But yeah, stop falling apart and I'll stop burning it down and um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm making moves on my, uh, my side too, which will be interesting to let you all know about, but um, details. Yeah. Well, and I did, I will, <laughs> so I, I will say that I'm going to sort of change the subject, but not um, cause I had this like two like little wins in the last couple of weeks Yay. that have been really nice well probably one was a business win too but these two you're gonna really laugh at me for so of course you know we just had birthdays and mm -hmm. I since this birthday I am obviously now getting old and falling apart because uh, that's what happens apparently when you turn 46 and so I'm really kind of mm -hmm. pissed off about it well a couple of weeks ago the neighbor came over and was sitting on the back deck with Alan and it was like right around my birthday and he was like, oh, happy birthday. I was like, thanks. Um, yeah, and I said something about being 46. And he was like, whoa, wait a second. And I was like, what? And he was like, I didn't even think you were 40 yet. And I was like, you're my new best friend. Thanks. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yeah, I still got it. And so then last night, Alan was on the phone with another one of his friends that um, who were his friend and me are Facebook friends. So he sees like all of my stuff. Alan's not on Facebook, but he sees all of my stuff because we're friends on Facebook. And he was like, oh yeah, Ronnie's not even 40 yet. Right. <laughs> Alan was like, these people must think I'm like robbing the cradle or something <laughs> because, <he's, laughs> because they all know how old he is. And they're like, yeah, he's not even 40 yet. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I could see that. And like looking at how graceful your mom has aged, I think the two of you are going to age very well. My mom my did, did too. too. Um, <clears throat> my, my dad did had too. A weird thing. Yeah, they didn't, um, like I would say they kind of stopped. My mom probably at like 55, my dad at like 60. They didn't really quite change much. Um, it'd be interesting to see when they choose to love me again and call me what they look like. But um, yeah, I see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mine'll be eternal, but um yours age very nice. So yeah. you've got good them. DNA. Yeah, no, I know. I, well, and people I have had people ask me, like, what's the secret? And I was like, 
I, you know, I can give you my skincare routine and all of the stuff that I do. Cause I do a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, I just have really good genetics. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. No, that's a huge win. Yeah. It's always yeah, nice good. to get the compliment. Yeah. Like it's, it's anyway. weird because we aren't necessarily great at receiving them, but they are nice. I know. Well, it's so like in my brain, I'm like, those were like two big wins for me in the last month. Yet I sold a great intensive last week. That should have been my highlight. But I'm like, <laughs> no, people think I'm younger than 40. <laughs> I know. Don't tell Kathleen that our sales are not our motivators, that the compliments yeah, exactly. of our age is more motivational. She's going to exactly. kick us in the butt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I wish I was, I know. Poor Kathleen. She's had to put up with me for so long. I know. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so anyway damn it girls <laughs> i know wouldn't she be feisty if she cussed more I, some days i wish but she's just that subtle like that you're like oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's worse it's, it's just worse. the look it's just the eyes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah if i, I go it. quiet run if she looks at you run if sue Hall starts it, it takes him so long. I don't really remember. It would he kind of snubs you a little, and then only once have I well, not once, but a few times did I ever hear him like cuss in Turkish, and then you run for the locker rooms. Run. <laughs> um, I don't know why that totally made me think of this. So, side note, you know what we used to do? Um, this is probably one of the times I made him cuss in Turkish. Uh, um, crab apples, you know, the little apples, the like baby apples. Yeah. Okay. We used to take the bag of them and swim them. We had a 12 foot pool. So one side was eight feet. The other side was 12 feet. So it's pretty deep. And um, I think 12, 16 feet. I don't know. Anyways, we had a high dive. So it was diving depth. Yes. And we would take a bag of the crab apples and pull it down to the grate or the filtration system mm -hmm. underneath. And we would shove the bag in and then you pull the bag out. <laughs> and then when you were doing your laps, you'd swim down, grab an apple, take a bite and put it back in and like, keep swimming. That was like one of the things we would do and somebody left the grate open once and all the apples started flooding to the surface and the coaches are like, what's fuck? And then they learned what we were doing and they actually incorporated it in, in for uh, breath exercises, but it was like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember doing that. I was not in charge of it, but I did participate. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally I see you active. actually being the mastermind of that. No, I was the mastermind between behind the shave party. So this is definitely a swimmer thing because you have to like shave your legs and arms and like whole body and stuff. And so I was the master behind coordinating the guy and girl uh, shave parties before uh, districts and state championships. Okay. And um, wish we had known about waxing. That would have been much easier or the sugar stuff. But um, yeah, we'd line up my mom and I. I don't know why no one ever questioned things that we did, but we went to like Rite Aid or a mini Mart or something. And we get like 10 bottles of shaving cream, <laughs> like a bunch of disposable razors and then like um, veggie trays. And we would line it up in the locker rooms and then shave down the guys. <laughs> it was like a sheep lineup, just shearing down the boy. <laughs> we shave our, they shaved heads. I never shaved my head for swimming, but I'm getting close enough now. But yeah, it was a whole thing. Anyway, side tangent. Yeah. <laughs> but that I was, I was the only girl ever allowed in the guy's locker room. That was like my big claim to fame because I was mm. such a Tom. I probably thought I was a dude at that time. But yeah, I helped a lot of them shave, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, and boy legs are so hard because they never shave. So it's not like that close shave. Like you got to basically like cut it down. It oh. for, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, like you do. It's again. like a whole thing. I'm like, oh. But you know, they're teenage boys. So it's mostly their legs, not like any back fur or anything crazy like that. But yeah, yeah, boys. I've, <laughs> I've definitely shaved many men in my lifetime. <laughs> Weird fact, if anybody wanted to know. <laughs> like, that's totally random, but I don't know. I was, and my, my favorite part was I always told them about lotioning afterwards because otherwise they get all the razor bumps and not know what to do. Cause they've never done this before <laughs> like grooming our guy team. I think that's also why a lot of girls tried to become my friends. Cause they knew how close I was to the guys. So they'd like befriend me to date them. Right. Uh, 
Anybody else have stories? Like, where were you? What were you guys doing? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, no, I don't have, I don't have many stories like that. <laughs> get you into the water world because there's way more fun things happening in there <laughs> but oh, nowadays I got, I, I got stories <laughs> they're just not like that they're not those stories they're not water stories I have other stories no I definitely I mean we're lucky I'm not a mob wife right now but oh yeah oh god I want to be that'd be fun yeah no my I think my worst thing we ever did was we soaked the freshman boys speedos in conditioner <laughs> and so when they jumped in they all went and slid off <laughs> and we would sud some of them so that when they'd swim it was just like froth of like bubbles in the water <laughs> I mean it's fine it's hazing back hazing. in the day when you were I was gonna say hazing like, yeah. it's not even hazy it's just funny <laughs> it is hazing actually <laughs> So I mean, dish soap. You're, all I can say though, if you need to make bubbles, dish soap over shampoo works way better. I mean, I would think that yes, <laughs> but You're off topic. Uh, yeah, totally. Like <laughs> this is this is a weird show. I know. Sorry. It's all right. Anyway, more in depth and meaning, you guys. Uh, you know what? This is truly how our conversations go. That people really are on the inside of what it's like. <laughs> Like, you know, this is how it goes. God, is that what we're going to title this? Hernias and hazing? <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> like, Netflix. that might be it. We're going to have to sign like a waiver. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, here are the things Adult you can concept. and cannot do. True adult. We're going to be on probation from day one. Oh, I hope so. Why would you ever not be? Like, yeah. anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Any valuable tips that we could share? I don't know. Adulting is hard. That's what I want to say. Oh, um, you know, I'm getting better at setting reservations. Oh, good. That's good. I don't. You need that there. I know. Well, I, I feel like, like, yes, I have also like worked this month, but I've been so focused on like health life things that I feel like I haven't done anything. I Although like that's important too for all of us to know, you know, when we're in the hustle culture, it is so not encouraged to have balance of life and health and all the things that like, this is why we're in these positions because we're working the way that we work. And then it just kind of piles up that all one day, then boom, you've got a little bit of everything. I know um, my doctor's appointment was rescheduled, just which I'm kind of excited about now. Cause I was thinking all in one day, that was going to be a lot of like, just touching. <laughs> just, I was going to be like, get off of me. <laughs> um, but just getting everything through. So I've got the doctor, the dentist and the eye exam coming up. So get all that figured out, but yeah, we don't take time and it's, it's kind of hard, but I, I know personally, it was like, I just needed a week to myself just to get like life stuff taken care of. I don't need it all the time. And I get it. Other people might have a better way that they just like trickle it in and somehow are able to do like both, but I, I don't. I think like, I'm, I wrote a post about this not long ago on my Instagram about like this weird like work life balance thing that never actually truly exists and you never really get there and I mean like so this like this week's been super crazy because I haven't felt good on top of Olivia has tell everyone a, what you did before going into the this is where I'm going with this so like I haven't felt good I worked at a client's office all day on Monday. Um, that was actually an hour and a half away. Like I drove an hour and a half, worked a nine hour day, drove an hour and a half home, not feeling well. And Olivia has, has a broken tooth. So she had to go to the vet. So, so Tuesday I get up, I had a stand up with a client. I get all no more than get off of that. I take her to the vet to have blood work drawn for her procedure. That's today. I come home and drop her off, go to my shoulder doctor, 
to have this done, walk downstairs to urgent care, who then makes the appointment for the ultrasound. And the earliest she could get me in was yesterday. So the next day with the instructions of if you, if this gets worse between now and then go straight to the emergency room. Like she actually scared me when she said it, she was like, finally, she was very, oh, like very specific about if this gets worse, you go to the emergency room. I'm like, okay. So, so that was like a full day of stuff. And of course now she's freaked me out about like thinking there's something serious. That, you know which is probably okay but in my brain then I go okay well I have a bunch of client work that is like very dependent on me this week and if they send me if they admit me tomorrow after after an ultrasound they like get an ultrasound and they're like oh my god there's something wrong with you and they admit me and it's like this emergency like so I I did I shipped orders <laughs> yesterday <laughs> for by way of Charleston because they needed to get out and they couldn't wait a whole other week if I ended up in the hospital and then I came home and I called another client because they needed checks cut and I, on Friday and I was like I might not be here on Friday so I call him real quick and I was like sorry for the scramble but so I spent an hour with them running checks to get things set up totally in pain and should be admitted to the hospital <laughs> girl and but I will say I got a lot done that like today and tomorrow <laughs> is gonna be nice and easy because oh I got everything done yesterday and a I feel hurry. like Angie's about to fly out to where you live and bop you on the back of the head <laughs> I know so yeah I'm you yeah. know it's funny it's like have you ever had com unexpected company come and like all of a sudden you're able to clean the bathroom the kitchen the house organize yes. everything yet on the weekend it takes you like six hours to clean all of that it it there's this like weird phenomenon yeah. of you know hyper productivity but I definitely don't think that's helping any of your strains <laughs> no it did not but um, it helped me mentally to know that the people that depended on me for specific things, it got done, at least the things that had to get done. And I, feel I like could- I'm a good friend visualizing how to duct tape you to the couch and, and force <laughs> you to watch me all day. I'm a good well, friend. <laughs> I'm, so, and it, the whole time, cause the last time this happened, and, <laughs> well, the last time this happened to me that I was this sick. Right. I went in a hospital for 14 days. Right. So which is still I good, was, but most sick people just go down and like well, so that's what made me want to prepare is because my past experience was like that. So Angie said, I plan parties just to force myself to get it all done in a short amount of time. The secret to life is out. Okay. Parties is and a then good she idea. goes, are we? She goes, are we seeing a pattern? <laughs> I think we are. Ronnie? Yes. I, I think she's still in denial though. She's still like, oh, I just was flipping between tasks before I was admitted. Like, <laughs> it's okay, people. We got to go slow baby steps with her. <laughs> I like this. I plan parties just to force myself to get it all done in a short amount of time. That's kind of that same concept of like taking yeah. your laptop to a coffee shop without your charger. Right. You know, cause but you know, right. my, my, my battery is only going to last two hours. Yeah. So what can get done I in like, that two hours? You know, I, I don't want to, <laughs> but a party's actually think... like, that's a better result. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I think you're missing it, Ronnie. That's still productivity. <laughs> Take your laptop <laughs> to the cafe. She's putting parties. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what I usually uh, she she goes okay she goes yeah dot 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 capitalized no <laughs> <laughs> um yeah Ronnie is still not getting it guys it's okay we'll we'll help her slowly we'll plan parties for her she'll we'll we'll I know some of her local friends we'll call we're I'm gonna make some calls <laughs> like we need to get her drunk and unproductive like something needs to happen here i know i do this though like i like scheduling dates during the work oh god help me i like scheduling dates during weekday 
times because then I do that. I get like super productive and I'm like, oh, I've got a happy hour at six. So like, I got to get everything done before then. And it's kind of a motivation. Yeah. So I think I get at least a point towards Angie's life hack, hack but mm -hmm. you fail. You know, I am, I am, I'm failing at life and fun and <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm failing. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm failing. Um, yeah, it's okay though. I mean, I like, and she's just laughing at us. Um, I like your diagnosis. Parties, off time, you must finish mer people. Must. It's part of the diagnostic. <laughs> I, um, I will recovery program. No, that is so, definitely like I've started it. I that's on the next. It's I, I will finish that. Did you ever not mute other people around you and just be like, excuse me, I'm watching this. <laughs> I even made the cats eat you. dinner late. I was that committed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I couldn't wait. <laughs> well, I mean, when there's another human in your house. I know. I don't know about that. There's yeah. so much talking. <laughs> and you have me as a bestie, so God forbid. <laughs> well, it's one of those things that, like, he was... So last night specifically was he was very relieved that all it was is just a hernia and it's something we can figure out and like I'm not dying. So he's super relieved. Hence makes him very chatty. And I was in the mood of like, I'm super relieved right now too. And this introvert like needs some quiet time because it's been a lot of peopling for me lately. And he just kept talking. So I just like I turned I just muted it. I just paused it and was like, I'm not so getting like, out of this. Like I'm not getting out of this, so I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna sit and listen. Bath bombs. Like, what's your what's your definition of relax? Like, I'd probably say hot shower or something. Like, what walk. would what would yours? I go walk. walk. God, she's still fucking productive. She's still on the move. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, hmm. Hmm. It's a little harder. I was hoping for something more stationary that I could like close you into a space and have happen. Like I can't lock you in the bathroom to like, you know, bath bomb it up, or I can't be like lock you in the kitchen and just give you a bottle of wine and be like, <laughs> wine, straw, let's go. <laughs> no. Okay. God, I'm gonna have to like chase after you while you're like walking yeah. in peace. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Like walking or dancing. Like that's my, that's my meditation. And the dancing too, but not to the straining of muscles. Yeah, no, I'm actually debating on Zumba tonight. It, like, I'm like, I feel better. I can go. And now I'm like, I need to not go tonight. Like, is there like over. a Zumba for elderly class or something? There is. Just be like there is. Lower? Yes. It's called Zumba Gold. There is. <laughs> okay. I think you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm not sure where she's at with this, but Angie says like a walk in nature, Ronnie. Uh, no, she means like around a track. I'm pretty sure there's a track. It's something round. Cause I know she takes laps on the damn oh, thing. So my street actually is a loop. So I just walk in the neighborhood. Yeah. Just, yeah. The street, you know, in a neighborhood is a loop and I go around it. No, I am not a hiker. No. <laughs> <laughs> like my my idea of camping is staying at holiday inn yeah so <laughs> yes i walk, walk out on <laughs> i walk outside <laughs> but right. it is not a nature walk by any means yeah <laughs> my new nature walk is walking to the waterfront that's my nature walk I think. right like yeah I mean, you're Which talking I would to the really girl. like to learn how to hop on a boat and get carried through the harbor and dropped off at the front, but that's me wanting to walk. <laughs> I get it. Anywho, well, yeah, we're, I don't know. I think you shouldn't um, consider taking the Zumba Gold class and maybe. Uh, yeah, see, this is where this now is a water. Conflict. Oh, go back to the water Zumba. Well, I, those or are Wednesday nights. I do need to do, like, that would be great. Those are, that only would a, be less. <clears throat> those are Wednesday nights and I do need to do that because they're very low impact. Yeah. I was going to say low impact. You can still strain yourself, but yes, I, I'm trying to definitely put the energizer low. back in a slower state impact but see I, this whole like going to the zumba gold stuff on the like older classes 
I just got complimented that I look lo- younger than 40. It's We're not about <laughs> an age, like <laughs> it's not, oh my God, help me. Um, it's not about age qualification. It's about not hurting yourself. <laughs> I, know, I know that, but <laughs> I'm vain that way. I'm sorry. I'm going to admit it. You're going to have like a small pod of elderly Zumba, highly flexible and well-fit Zumba ladies attack you. You know that, right? Like you can't be saying this about your Zumba gold ladies. They're just going to come up in the night. No, (laughs) no. My Zumba ladies that are older do not do Zumba gold. They would never do it. Like they can out circle me in class. I know that's what I'm saying. Do not diss the like. My my seventy year old girlfriends that do Zumba with me will outdance me any day. You know, it's like Kathleen. Yeah, so she'd outdo us any day without a yes. doubt. Yeah, yeah she would. See, here's the thing: I think you need to save this productivity for later in life. I think there's a balance issue here. Like you're doing it too young. Okay, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to pace yourself. You got to push this off. You know, okay. So this is actually what I think needs to happen. I need oh to think this is what cracked the egg, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is what I think needs to happen. I think I need to start interviewing for my next rich husband. So I don't have to work at all. And I can just do all of these activities that I really want to do. And hurt how many body parts at that point? Yeah, but see, I don't have to work and stress over that. So I'd be a whole lot easier. That's the balance part. I need. I, I need. I need there. a second rich I'll be husband. Duct taping you to a couch. I need, I need a second rich husband. That's this is this will solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, just get your medical bills paid. Well, that too. Actually, <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Maybe to be more needs, productive. Maybe it needs to be a doctor. <laughs> Oh God, you're going to need a general practitioner though. Cause you're going to be in all different types. If you get a specialist and you know, the generalists don't make what the specialists do. So this is still an issue for you. You've got to like pick your poison of injury now. Like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. That's all we have for you. We're, we're calling it. This has probably killed a neuron in all of us. We are all going to send Ronnie some oh. very good types because when left alone and unattended, she strains things. And then she calls it just flipping between <laughs> activities, not multitasking. We have a case of denial on aisle two. I'm glad I could be a contributing factor. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I could be the example for others. Let's do better. <laughs> Let's do better. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, guys, this is why you should really call the hotline. This is why you should leave questions in the comments. This is why you should work with us because if you don't, we just talk and this is what you're going to get. So, I this mean, has really, been is our life for a month. So, like what Kardashians are talking about, though, between who they dated, who, you know, whatever. I mean, it's really I not mean, that. We can do that too. Yeah. We're the oh next God, if they saw my lineup. Oh. <laughs> well. Like I said, I'm I'm getting ready to start interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or emotional outbursts, please hop into the chat now live on the replay at any point in your lives, because we're still going to do this because this is our baby passion project that we really like are looking for champagne sponsorships at any time. Um, and a Netflix hookup. So yeah, that's all. That's all. Call us. Let us yes. know. Angie, we hope you have a beautiful day. Yes. Hope you have Thanks, a great Angie. day. <laughs> and uh, we will see you all next week next for another week? episode. Thursdays. At what time? Noon Eastern time. Good job, everybody. We will see you back next Thursday. Bye, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm. No, it's not working. It's not in the habit. (laughs) Bye.